Well, it's about midterm season at some places, right? The defense took the midterm and they passed it with flying colors, dominating the Cougars. Let's talk about it again on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to this edition of the Locked On UCLA podcast. I'm your host, Zach Anderson Yoxheimer. Thanks for making the show your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. So like, comment, subscribe, review, talk trash, talk some love, whatever it may be. Thanks for your support. And hey, if you're an everydayer, you would have heard us talk about this. is the defense's first true test, or it was, for UCLA's D against Washington State, who have been put, posting numbers against some pretty decent defenses prior to the UCLA game. Get that mess out of here, said Danton Lane of the UCLA defense, led by Latu and a lot of other cast of characters for UCLA's D. And the Bruins came away winning 25-17 against the top 13th ranked Cougars team. And because of that win, UCLA returns to the top 25, top 22 in the coaches poll, number 18 in the AP poll, which all means the UCLA is getting the respect and the credit they deserve. And that's how deep the Pac-12 is. You lose one week. You bump out of the, pack, of the top 25, you win the next week, and you can get right back into the semi-medium national spotlight for now until UCLA can try and continue to rack up wins. As we always do on our Monday episodes, grade, react, what's the next step for UCLA? Let's talk about the defense because that is where the story starts for this game and the reason why UCLA won this game. There are some offensive heroics. We'll get to, there, get to that a little later, but it all comes down to UCLA needs to go to Danton Lynn, offer a number, have him laugh at it and says, that's too much. And UCLA says, no, there's we, we can go higher than this. Big 10 money's coming in. I know it's public school. They're still trying to deal with the athletic department deficit and all the other stuff, right? But they got to keep make sure Danton Lynn does not leave after not just two seasons, a season with this remarkable turnaround that the defense has showcased through the first five games. There will be bigger and crazier tests and maybe unexpected challenges for the defense later down the line. But for now, they have passed just about every test in all the games. I can sit here and talk about how Leatu Latu is fantastic. We all know how good he is forcing fumbles, having a sack prior to the fumble in the first quarter, forcing the fumble that let UCLA back in the game where they could have been down two scores early for the second straight game, instead change the momentum and let that the defense dictate the play for the rest of the game. And that's how UCLA was able to dominate one telling statistic, which I think is very telling about this UCLA team this year, the Bruins against FBS competition. So we're not talking about the NC central game, but if their first stringers were in, they probably would have not scored anyway. UCLA against FBS competition in the fourth quarter has outscored their opponents 33 to zero. Now, the, that point total isn't a whopping, eye-popping total for UCLA scoring. It's the zero in the fourth quarter that's telling, right? Heading into the Utah game, the Bruins were down. They said, you're not scoring in the second half. You're not scoring at all in the fourth quarter. Against Coast Carolina, when that game was getting a little closer than we thought, a one-point game heading the fourth, the Bruins closed it out. How many turnovers did the Bruins force in the fourth quarter? What did the UCLA Bruins do in the fourth against the Cougars? Dominant. When they had fourth and short near midfield when they are up eight, didn't even let them get a crack at getting closer, deeper into UCLA territory, ended the game there so the Bruins could kneel it out for victory. That zero point scored against, against FBS competition, I'm not sure that'll be a goose egg the entire year. But again, they have only given up seven points this whole season in five games in the fourth quarter and zero against FBS competition. That is how the D-line is just generating pressure. The secondary, which in my perspective, I've kind of given it as a much maligned unit coming into the year, has made plays, been able to keep the Cougar receivers covered and other receivers for the most part covered for a large portions of longer plays. And they haven't been burned by mobile quarterbacks, which we saw in years previous, multiple times in 22, that has not translated to 23. McCall's a fairly mobile quarterback. He didn't do much against them. 
San Diego State's rushing attack, they got a more run first quarterback they, that nothing happened there. Nate Johnson would probably operate more as a running back throwing the football. Bruins somewhat kept him contained, a little bit different story there. And then Cam Ward with one of the best third down convert, converting offenses, one of the best teams in the country when it comes to converting third downs. They passed the ball, a mobile quarterback who had been on a trajectory upwards towards hearing some noise about the Heisman. UCLA's defense said, nah, he's going to throw for less than 200 yards, more interceptions than touchdowns thrown. And the Bruins found ways to make him uncomfortable the entire game with not having to send too much pressure. Three down linemen up front, standing up right, listening to the Pac-12 broadcast over and over again, saying they're generating pressure and they don't need to bring the house, allowing them to sit back in coverage. I know some may have pointed out, well, the Cougars don't run the ball as successfully, so it allowed UCLA to do that. But the Bruins executed the game plan, not having to play for the run all too often. And when they did, swallowed it whole, made sure Ward did not get around and get outside the contain all too often. If he did, he got pushed back in and still had nowhere to throw. That's not a staple of what UCLA defense has had any time during the Chip Kelly era. Definitely at the end of the Jim Moore era, they did not have that when they're just giving up bunch, bunches and bunches of points that we wish they did not give up. In years previous, we would have thought this game might have been 35-31. Like I predicted, that was clearly not the case. And it's the defense that's leading the story. And there's a lot of numbers against the teams they have played. We didn't really know what Coastal Carolina's looked like. We didn't really know what San Diego State could be. NC Central, that's obviously a different story. FCS HBCU school. They, they stood the test against Utah, but a, a lower down the depth chart quarterback. But this is the performance that you circle on the calendar and is a defining performance, back-to-back -back dominant defensive performances where they just truly swallowed up the opponent and said, hey, you're not going to do anything. We will dictate what we do defensively. There, there's no better way to have other than a defense that can dominate like UCLA. It helps when UCLA was on the, play, on the field for so much less time than Washington State. We had talked about, I hadn't really talked about it, but there you could look at time of possession so many times, and UCLA, their defense had been on the field a lot more usually than their opponent. This time, UCLA, in a long defensive slugfest, had the ball for much longer than the Cougars did because they could run the ball a lot better than Washington State can. And just see how fresh the defense was. The Cougars were going nowhere in that fourth quarter when the Bruins outscored them 13 to nothing on the heels of a couple of touchdown runs by a little unsung hero we'll talk about in the second segment for UCLA. So while the Bruins, you have Gabriel Murphy, who had a couple of tackles for loss. Again, three sacks, six tackles for loss. I had a little short that was posted on the YouTube channel. I was on the Locked On College Kickoff Live. How would UCLA cover this game? How would they cover the three-point favorite that they were coming in, well, they were going to, I said, they, they would get to Cam Ward. They would get to him three times. They got to him three, three sacks. They needed QB pressure, and they had to force a turnover and make sure it wasn't the freshman who made more mistakes than the longer tenured quarterback for Cam Ward, who's played multiple years at the FCS level and now at the FBS level, who was a very good quarterback. The Bruins forced him to be uncomfortable. They didn't drop interceptions like Ola Dejo almost did. They took advantage of each and every single opportunity. Four turnovers, turnovers forced in every game this season, usually multiple turnovers. And this time when the ball was on the ground, they pounced on it, and they were ball hawks, which if you go back to the keys to the game, the Bruins need to get pressure, contain the QB, and be a ball hawk, force turnovers. Exactly those two things led to a UCLA victory. An absolute A-plus performance by the UCLA defense. Now the question is, how long can they keep Dan the def defensive coordinator in UCLA, in Westwood, in Pasadena, as long as humanly possible? Even beyond the Chip Kelly years, whenever that ends at some point, we hope Danton Lynn is still, as a coach at UCLA, dominating with this UCLA defense. With a D-line that has been dominant, linebackers are stepping up, the secondary made some big plays. Just a fantastic performance. Again, the number, what, number one, number two passing offense in the country. You go to third downs. Washington State, the best coming into the game at converting on third downs. They were two of 13. 
and they missed their one fourth down opportunity at the end of the game. Those are ways to win games, even when your offense is sputtering and trying to cough up the game for a second consecutive to get time, right? Because it just makes it all the more frustrating that they didn't win the Utah game when it's clear as day that they could have. The Utes played a fantastic game, and the Bruins did as well. They just came out on the other end. It just makes us more frustrated, especially me, so frustrated that they did not win the Utah game when they clearly could have, clearly with their missed opportunities, which leads us to while we talk a little bit about the, the freshman struggles of Dante Moore, we're going to talk a little bit more also about, hey, the offensive line, clearly not a strength of this year's team. That's coming up next on Locked On UCLA. Now it's time for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like you could insert any type of dominance by UCLA players, your Game Changer, is it Carson Steele? Is it the entirety of the UCLA defense led by Leatu Latu? We're going to highlight Keegan Jones and his game-winning touchdown run and two touchdown runs, almost identical, just mere moments apart in the fourth quarter, where he came out of what seemed like nowhere to have two bursting runs that led the Bruins to victory. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Well, how do they do that? They're full of flavor, well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer, award-winning, great-tasting, and they beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, golden sours, and more, and they're fit for all times, anytime, anywhere, they make any activity more enjoyable. You can find Athletic Brewing Companies, non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers use the promo code Locked On to get 15% off your first order. Again, that's Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, Locked On at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusion and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing fits for all times. Cruising on, second segment, Locked On UCLA. All right, let's talk about the offense, right? The defense, A++. Now let's talk offense. And while it doesn't say special teams on the, the little rundown there, special teams, which nearly was extremely disastrous as much as what UCLA's offensive mistakes could have been. So the Bruins, a couple of interceptions, early mistakes from Dante Moore in the first half, came out a bit better. Maybe a pep talk from DTR on the sideline. Maybe even Charbonnet from far may have shouted something like, you got it, kid, whatever it may be. The Bruins were able to adjust in the second half, take advantage of Washington State's lack of offensive success and a couple of miscues to lead the Bruins to victory. Because while this was a one-score victory for UCLA, the Bruins could have won this by two or three scores and were on the verge of doing so going into the locker room at the Rose Bowl when they're right on the, the precipice of a touchdown, at least a field goal, which we realize now this season for UCLA is no longer a gimme. And yet the Bruins went trailing in the locker room. They didn't put their heads down. They found ways to be successful. While we saw the emergence of the UCLA defense as a legit stamped, full stamp of approval, all right, this is legit. They did it against a good offensive team. The, the offense what we saw was maybe some minor adjustments from Chip Kelly, right? Clearly, you'll read about it. You saw it. A lot more rollouts from Dante Moore, specifically successful, going to his right. Not as much, or there was a key missed pass where he went rolling to his left. But the difference with Dante Moore, who can zip in passes and fit it in windows, that I'm still not sure how he can do that as a true freshman. There still are struggles. This isn't going to be a segment where we harp and just completely destroy the confidence of a true freshman quarterback. But it is to be known that in a year where UCLA's defense is so legit now, I guess we can say the word legitimate, that the freshman quarterback is what can be a little bit scary. Right? What scared me at the end of the game? Was it the defense trying to get a stop, or is it if UCLA had the ball, they might turn it over? I would lean the latter as opposed to the former now. Well, more clearly the best of the best suited for the job as the starting quarterback and do things that the Bruins can't. What does Chip Kelly have in Dante Moore that he doesn't have in other QBs? More of a pocket passer as opposed to these dual threat, all right, read option on the run, toss it out, and get a wide open receiver every single time. He's got something different in more than he had in DTR. And now it looks like Kelly's starting to realize it. 
it helps and shows that they're doing things to help offset the lack of offensive line dominance that the Bruins have had the last maybe couple of years when they had Charbonnet pounding the rock, when they had DTR as a dual threat QB threat, which might have offset any offensive line struggles that we didn't even realize from years previous. It is clear the offensive line is not a strong suit for UCLA's team. There's nothing that I can be told that will change it otherwise. They can do good. Obviously, they ran the football much better against Washington State than they did against Utah. So that's important that the Bruins can run the rock. But to protect a young quarterback and give him time to process and read the defense, all things he's learning on the fly, they're not even the first half of the season yet for UCLA. When he, he sacked four times, nine tackles for loss. Those are numbers Washington State's defense put up. And in those categories, they outplayed, quote unquote, UCLA's defense by having more sacks, more tackles for loss. That's more an indictment, I would say, of the UCLA offensive line, some schemes, and the inability to pick up some blitzes when the Bruins face immense pressure on third and long or second and long, like we've seen against Utah in that game at moments during the Washington State game. The Bruins can move the football, and they're finding ways to get Dante more and more successful. Who would have had another passing touchdown if they had the opportunity? Remember, the J. Michael Sturt event, that one touchdown pass was overturned after the, the drop there or the supposed drop on the bobble after a great, fantastic effort by him. Still, Moore has this learning curve. And the quicker he does it, the quicker UCLA goes from a good football team to one that can super compete in this season. The quicker that happens, or just finding ways for him to be more successful, right? You've probably read in various reports like the LA Times or just various places where Moore has talked about, especially post-game of the Washington State game, talking to Chip Kelly, hey, how do we get me, get me into better situations? How do we get plays that work better for more of a pocket passer with a good running game other than the quarterback being both like a DTR could have been in certain situations. And all learning that on the fly while reading Power 5 FBS defenses that are just going to run and show blitzes and pressure in his face again and again with both a, the young mindset and the lack of an offensive line. So while we did see the pick six early in the end of the first half, that nearly cost UCLA the game, a nice rebounding effort for him to fight through these early young struggles and hopefully this will mean not just great things for the rest of this season, for the Oregon State game, but for the rest of what we hope to be a long, fruitful UCLA career. So while we're taking the growing pains now, the more the Bruins can win, and as frustrating as the Utah loss is, kind of wasting that mulligan in a sense, the Bruins can probably and will be better off for it moving forward. Now that we've talked about those struggles, let's talk about some highlights before we go to whatever this special teams nonsense was. One more thing. Hey, Carson Steele, we'd seen more of a split between Steele and Harden moving forward. But for Carson Steele, 140 yards rushing, a workhorse back, 30 carries. Not that Harden didn't do a lot, but you've got Carson Steele, who clearly came out one of many UCLA newcomers and transfers that made big plays, like Leatu Latu. I know he's been here for a while, but Carson Steele making big plays, running the rock not going down, churning out almost five yards a carry for 30 carries. That wears down a defense, and it eventually did for UCLA. Then you've got Maliki Matzavau, who led the Bruins in receiving yards. Hey, for, forget about him, Oregon transfer, or his other former Oregon teammate, now UCLA teammate, Keanu Williams. I know it's his defensive stat, but he recovered a fumble. All these newcomers, and J. Michael Sturdivant, top two in receiving the ball. A lot of newcomers making plays. Matzaval making a couple of big catches, 30-yard catches, leaking out, finally getting him involved in the offense, which is nice to see UCLA use the tight ends a bit more like they did successfully a lot at times in 2022. Steel running the ball, that was good. To see the Bruins' offensive line, as much as I've harped not too many good things on the pass blocking, the Bruins have been able to just grind it out running the ball, and they will need to do that to be successful and win more games down the line in 2023 by doing it just like they did against Washington State, just minus the turnovers. One little harping on the special teams. We finally saw what the, the range of sorts for Lopez and the Bruins special teams, right? 47 yards is about where they might be comfortable letting Lopez take it in a situation where it might not be ride or die with the game on the line. And they missed one, hooked it. 
And then you had another kick where they got blocked, a missed extra point. And to Lopez's credit, he still came through and knocked in the rest of his kicks after those early mistakes and the failed blocking by his own old line that nearly cost UCLA the game again. Special teams, I'll, I'll give that a, an F because you can't just miss an extra point. You can't miss a field goal and get one blocked, which isn't on Lopez, but you can't just do all those and have it be a good performance. He did come back confidently and make the rest of his kicks, but that is not something that's going to give us a lot of confidence going forward when the game is on the line. I know the Bruins didn't do what the Trojans nearly did at the end of regulation and blow a gimme field goal for the win. Still, that's got to be shored up, fix that up, get lucky in a win like the Bruins did. That special team's mistakes did not haunt them in this one as it could have and get the job done. We'll give them the D minus to an F performance special teams wise. Offensively, it's kind of a weird mixed bag. You want to be positive and there's still things to work on. Hovering between a passing grade, it's one of those where I don't even want to give a letter grade. I just want to give a check, got the job done, got the win, move on, move forward, right? It's one of those, you look at the kids' report cards nowadays. Now there's just numbers of things and it's not fully letter grades. It's more younger kids and you get a little check mark. Cool, check, got the job done. That's what the offense did in this game. Got back to basics, running the football, moved Dante Moore out. Nothing truly spectacular, but still significantly outgained Washington State in yards. Got 8 of 25 on third downs, which isn't even a great conversion rate. But when you're doing a lot better than the opposition because of what the defense is doing, it's going to look even better with the offensive numbers the Bruins are putting up. 140 yards by your lead back, nearly 200 yards rushing, almost 300 yards throwing, and they've been able to limit the damage even if they throw pick six like the Bruins have done the last couple of games with Dante Moore making some mistakes in the first half and then growing in the second half. The maturity from halftime adjustments into the second half, which we hope the Bruins can do over and over. The offense, give a C-plus, borderline B-minus. The running and the getting the O-line going when it comes to Carson Steele, A+. plus, But protecting more, making sure there's time, the mistakes, that's where it holds me back, saying there's still more to be, uh, potentially be, that's still waiting to get tapped into. And when we get that combined performance of super offensive juggernaut mixed in with the defense has already now shown us five times this season, then we'll see the true potential of these Bruins. And we hope they bring that against Oregon State on the road in Racer Stadium because that is a massive opportunity for UCLA to jump again into the upper echelon of the top four in the standings after starting 0-1 in Pac-12 play. So we hope that those things together can be A-plus performances against the Beavers, which we'll talk about coming up next on Locked On UCLA to wrap up the show. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, and style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Over 120 million plus parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. You, you ain't burning cash. You're burning rubber. With all the parts and prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP that brings home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion to apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Final segment of the Locked On UCLA podcast. Zach with you guys wrapping things up. Now that the Bruins have passed their test against Washington State, Oregon State brings a whole new challenge for UCLA in all facets of the game, whether it's a different challenge for the defense because the Bruins are going to face a pretty staunch rushing attack in Oregon State. For the offense, how can they manage winning on the road? Overall as a team, how can the Bruins win a big game on the road with what I believe to be now an elimination game in the Pac-12 race to maybe make it to the Pac-12 Conference Championship game. If the Bruins want to have a shot at that this season, obviously winning this game is a must against a solid Oregon State team that already took it to Utah recently in a game where 
They dominated a short week against the Utah Utes, 21 to 7 at home. Then they put up a lot of numbers at Cal in a funky game where I'm not sure the Utah the Oregon State Beavers will give up 42 points as much, but we'll see how the Beavers respond in this game against everybody else in this big time performance because hey, UCLA prime time against the Beavers, that's important national television. We'll see how it all plays out because UCLA they go from facing a top-tier passing offense. Then you flip the script one more time. And you see UCLA facing Oregon State, who is a top-15 rushing offense. You take a look at yards per game. They average 205 yards per game. UCLA sits just a little bit lower than that at 22. So these are two teams that are commanding running the football. Whose line of scrimmage can win? And I know the Bruins have showcased their ability to stop the run against San Diego State silenced it in these last few weeks. I think the defense can be up to the challenge, even though the Bruins have opened up as, I believe, what, four to five-point underdogs on the road, as they should be in a what will be a rowdy research stadium environment. Doesn't mean that they can't win, but the importance of this game, the Pac-12 title race, some of these games for UCLA coming up look a little tougher than they initially did, like the Colorados, the Arizona games. Still, you win this game against Oregon State, then you've got what you could argue is a an easy cupcake, even though Stanford's still a tough test. You got back-to-back road games, and then you got some a tough one against Colorado, the Arizona schools, which leads you into USC week. All of a sudden, that schedule just kind of sprints you through October into November. Games where UCLA, I believe, will be favored in almost all those games leading into the USC game after this performance against Oregon State, where they're currently an underdog against DJ Uyengalele, a rushing team, Jonathan Smith, a, a program that's put themselves on the map once again as they search for a new conference home, which isn't really the focus of this week. It's who can win and keep themselves alive with one loss heading into the thick and the heat of the middle of the season and the Pac-12 race. Because Oregon State still got to go play. Oregon, Washington, UCLA have to go play those teams? Absolutely not which is why this middle-of-season stretch, the Utah, then Washington State, Oregon State games are so vastly important. Two and one of those games means UCLA is very good, and even beyond the initial outlook of this season, winning those games looks even better for UCLA currently during the season if they can pull it off. Doing that keeps them alive in the Pac-12 race, and hey, we love a good Pac-12 hunt to the end because... As much as USC playing the Coliseum scary, hey, they have no defense over there. So if the Bruins can stay in the hunt, longer the better. The defense showcases some big-time things. The Bruins can show, show the rest of the country they're for real. But they need to pass one more test to vault from that. All right, we believe in you in the top 20. You're a good football team, too. Oh, watch out. The Bruins have just had one hiccup, and they've got a favorable part of the schedule coming up. This is where it's, hey, Chip Kelly... All the naysayers for Chip Kelly coming in this game will say, hey, they don't win big road games. They don't win big games. This is a chance for Chip Kelly and the UCLA Bruins in his UCLA coaching career to change that narrative. And then he's got to add on to that by beating teams that are supposed to be in the stretch from the middle of October into early November. Two big things Chip's got to get off his off his shoulders. Win that big game on the road and then beat the teams you're supposed to beat in conference play when you're competing for a conference championship appearance. Those are all things the Bruins are facing. Oregon State, they're fighting for exposure, big games, big wins. They took that setback against Washington State. Should UCLA be more confident? Absolutely, because Washington State was controlling the majority of that game for Oregon State early before the Beavers crept in late. The difference is, and what may win the Pac-12 this season, who wins the most road games against the most quality opponents? That sounds simple and easy, but that is what's going to win the Pac-12. Now it gets quality. Who wins the most road games? Who can steal one on the road like UCLA could have and should have against Utah, which leads to our frustration boiling over even more? That will lead to who can get to the conference championship game. In a divisionless era at the end of the Pac-12 conference, who's going to win the most road games? If the Bruins can stack those up leading into that clash against SC in the Coliseum, then we'll be in for a very exciting end of couple of weeks, end of season November. But until then, the Bruins got to stop the run, 
be a unique, different test against an Oregon State defense that did give up a lot of points against Cal. I believe they were without some guys early on in that Cal game in the first half. Still, the offense has to get better and prepare for a unique road environment in Research Stadium. I can't wait. I'm excited. We'll dive into that if you're every day or of Locked On UCLA. We'll get into specifics in these next couple of episodes. We'll throw in some Throwback Thursday segments as well. Tell me what you want me to talk about, things I want to, you want me to key on and talk about here for this big week, UCLA-Oregon State. Third game in four weeks where the season is somewhat on the line and defined by a win or loss by UCLA. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Hands up, Bruins fans. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the download button. And it's a clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A U C L A. UCLA fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.